Uh, particularly because glyphosate is so pervasive, it's considered to be so safe. Uh, people yeah. use it in their yards with their children playing there. They don't think it's a problem. Uh, it's all over the food supply. It's in the air. It's in the water. Uh, it's the most used herbicide on the planet in the United States, uses more per person than any other country in the world. And we have very high rates of autism. So it all kind of fit together. If you look at the uh, rates of autism in first grade um, in the United States um, versus in, the, in the public schools uh, versus the use of uh, glyphosate over the previous four years, so that would be like the age of two to the age of six in the child's life. Um, you take those two plots and you put them on the same page and they coincide. It's like a 0.99 correlation coefficient. Right. It's absolutely stunning. And, you know, people say, well, correlation doesn't mean causation. And then they say, well, how could, and of course, then we went on to find all kinds of other diseases. How could one chemical cause so many diseases? Uh, I refused to give up. I mean, I just felt like I, we were onto something really huge here, finding the biological mechanism. So it's been quite a journey. It's been a, a wonderful puzzle. And I feel like I've really kind of cracked the code with that book. And um, so I'm very pleased with what I've discovered and, um, and including things like sleep disorder. I've seen, you know, we have striking correlations. I've published papers where we show perfect correlation with sleep disorder, which is another thing that's really come, become rampant lately. And it wasn't really an issue back when I was young, you know, and um, depression, um, anxiety, uh, ADHD, autism, they're all going up dramatically in step with the rise in glyphosate usage. If you just eat meat, then maybe that reduces some of your exposure. And then on top of that, even if you eat some of, let's say, the grain fed cows, um, the fact that there was this one study that I saw that said, if you have sufficient, I think, um, aromatic amino acids, you may be able to uh, block some of the antimicrobial effects of, um, of glyphosate. If we eat sufficient meat, and then we do get exposed to some of the glyphosate, will we be protected because of those aromatic amino acids? Well, I do think it's a good idea to eat a lot of foods that have aromatic amino acids um, to buffer them against the, the loss because of the glyphosate exposure, because you're in, as you know, the gut microbes produce aromatic amino acids yeah. for the host. Our cells are incompetent. They can't make those, those important molecules. And those are, you know, the part of the coding, the, the basic building blocks of proteins, but they're also precursors to an incredible number of important biologically active molecules. And I talk about that in my book, but the, so the pathway that makes aromatics is blocked by glyphosate. It's used in many uh, microbes in our gut to make them for the host. Right. And the aromatics are precursors for serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, um, melanin, the skin tanning agent, uh, epinephrine. So all of these um, really important hormones and, uh, and the protection from the sun, all of those things come out of that chicken. Also thyroid hormones. So all of them come out mm -hmm. of that chicken pathway. All of them are going to be uh, insufficient in the context of life as a chronically poisoning our gut microbes. Even, you know, people are taking a lot of aminos as supplements these days, mm -hmm. which I find interesting. You can get sort of a complex of aminos in general or specific amino acids. Glycine, of course, is a big one because that's the one that glyphosate is really messing up um, in, in, the, in the proteins. annotated, and summarized, easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.